Welcome back, boys and girls. So today we just got back from the Hyperkin Super Retron HD launch party, which was hosted at World 8 in Los Angeles. Pretty popular and famous, you know, retro gaming collectible store. They also sell new stuff as well, you know, PS4, Nintendo Switch. They, they encompass everything, but it was pretty sweet. So I picked up a couple things while I was there, you know, grabbed a copy of Sonic Adventure 2 for the Dreamcast, becoming very very uh, difficult to find for a reasonable price. So I say if you could find this for anywhere under 40 bucks, grab it if you're a Dreamcast collector. Shaq Fu, complete in the box, manual, everything for the Super Nintendo. I could not pass on this. We got to play this on Super Retro on HD. So pick this up. I don't know, you know, I don't have this game and Hey, it's it's a it's a classic in its own right, you know, for one reason or another. And then you know we got these little swag bags from Hyperkin with these cool little pixel glasses. Um, my kids love these things. Even my wife had a pair of pixel glasses from the uh, arcade expo last year. So hey, I'm gonna give them these glasses. I'm sure they'll have fun with them. Got a couple pairs. Uh, these weird little <laughs> Hyperkin bow buttons were also in the little swag bag, you know, kind of, kind of neat, you know, whatever. The prize of the swag bag, though, were these things. I didn't know what these were. I thought these were, like, something weird, but <laughs> these are packages of pogs. It's freaking awesome for your, for milk cap games. So you get a slammer and some pogs. I don't know about you, but I freaking love pogs back in the day. So let's open one of these up before we get to the the real reason we're checking this video out. So I haven't checked, I haven't looked at these yet, but dude, that's that's dope. Hyperkin Slammer, that's what I'm talking about. Let's let's bring Pogs back. Let's bring Pogs back for reals. So that's a nice little Slammer right there. I'm gonna whoop some kids' butts with that one. And then a little collection of Pogs, little hippo looking dude. And I guess the little hippo dude, oh, the Superboy S. Nice, I gotta get me one of those. The Retron 5 and the uh, the little Smart Boy. That's pretty cool. Little collection of Pogs, whatever. That's pretty neat. I, I was actually really excited when I saw that and I was like, whoa, these are Pogs. That's flipping amazing. That's cool. I still have like a little collection of Pogs. So we're gonna have to bring that back for sure. So, Going ahead and checking out the system here. This is this is what we uh, we went to the launch party party for. Is the Super Retron HD nice hefty package? You know they do a really good job with their packaging for sure. Um, so this system releases on Monday. Um, I believe if you order from Amazon, pre-order link will be in the description. You should have it. You know, uh, anywhere between Monday to Wednesday next week. So pretty nifty, but here's the box. Looking pretty nice. We do get two controllers, um, premium cadet, or no, they're the scout controllers. I keep, uh, I keep, uh, keep saying the wrong name, um, but that's you get two of them. Pretty awesome. 16 by nine, four by three aspect ratio switch, 720p, HD audio and video, NTSC and PAL switch. So that's pretty awesome. Pin perfect technology, so I hadn't seen this before, so that's that's pretty cool. Pin, you know, perfect technology. Hyperkin, little foiling there, gold foiling. Gold foiling is always awesome on packaging, I think. Their little cutaway, you know, that's their little signature thing. It's the little cut corner. I, I like that, I dig it. Limited warranty. Register your product, you gotta go to their website to register it, nice. Um, you know, more of the same information on the back. It says, all oh, snap, the 90s are back. Um, with the raddest console to hit your crib. <laughs> no diggity. The Super Retron HD is 16 bits of high definition nostalgia. Letting your play, your SNES, NTSC, and Power, SFC cartridges and crisp and vibrant 720p HD. Includes two premium classic style controllers. 3-foot HD cable supports 4x3 and 16x9 and a 6-foot micro USB charging cable. 
You can even play via AV with the provided AV cable. There's no doubt the Super Retron HD is a proper celebration of the past and the future of retro video games. Dust off those old carts and get your butt to work. So just some more information there, the, you know, more of the same. Let's go ahead and pop this bad boy open and see what we got inside. I've really been excited to check this out. Um, the you know Hyperkin and, and a lot of these companies they're they're catering to to this retro market. You know these you know people who want to relive their youth and don't want to spend a fortune. Um, and a lot of people do not have access to you know CRT TVs or their HD TVs. Like you know old systems look like garbage on them. So they're now providing you know options like this. Um, you know, people who are hardcore, big time Super Nintendo or NES fans who accept no imitation, this is not for you. Um, but that's not what we're discussing. We're discussing the value you're getting, the build quality, and peeping out how the games look and run on this. If you're hardcore and you want a Super Nintendo and you want the best image and video audio quality possible, then yeah, you know, RGB SCART, you know, get a, a SNS 101 modified to S-Video and, you know, have SCART with clean sync and whatnot, or get a one chip, uh, you know, original SNES. Those are your options, but for those who don't want to go on the hunt for that or don't want to deal with that and just want a simple solution that they can plug into their modern TV, uh, I think this is a reasonable option. Um, I've already played the system at the launch party and I thought it was pretty awesome. The quality, the, the video and audio was good for me. Um, but here we go. Let's go ahead and get the rest of this out of the box. And I, I really I really like the, uh, the plastics they use on this. It just feels really good. You got two controller ports and you can use your original Super Nintendos or you can even use your retro receivers from, from 8-Bit Doe. And there's your, your pin perfect uh, technology at work in there. And you can see some ventilation from the bottom, so that's good. Keeping this, this fella ventilated. Um, on the back here, you do have your HDMI, your power, your AV if you so choose, and your 16 by 9 by 4 by 3 aspect ratio switch. Let's go ahead and put it to 4 by 3 now. Don't want to mess with 16 by 9. And we do have the NTSC PAL, so I'm gonna make sure to leave it on NTSC, which I think that is the big selling point for this is the compatibility. Um, it's gonna play your EverDrive, your flash cards, your multi carts, your repros, your cheap Chinese repros, um, your infinite NES Lives repros, the, you know, whatever. It's gonna play everything. Um, you Japanese release games, US and European release games, so that is pretty awesome. Um, there's some nice weight to this, it doesn't feel cheap and hollow. So I really dig that. You got a nice little reset button, power switch, which I'm really digging that. It really, you know, has that feel of a legit system. And then one awesome thing is that eject button. Really dig that. Nice touch, nice touch. So going forward, you get an instruction manual. We don't need no instructions up in here. We know how to plug a system in and power it on. Don't need it. Get over there. What else do we got in here? So I'm assuming this bottom box is our power supply and AV cables and whatnot. So let's just quickly open that and take a look. That's the boring stuff. Who cares? Who cares? But nice, you do get those options. You do get an AV cable, nice little HDMI cable and your power cable and plug. So that's cool. Should also be able to plug this into your TV if you have USB on your TV. So that's a cool little option. And then the controllers. Now, I've already used these controllers, or not these specific ones, but I have used these at the launch party, and man, these are very comfortable. The buttons feel good, the shoulders feel good, the start and select feel, everything feels good. I actually really dig this. As far as a third party controller goes, these are too legit to quit in my opinion. Um, I've used plenty of Super Nintendo controllers. I've used plenty of NES controllers, third parties and whatnot. And Hyperkin, for some reason, they've, they, you know, they're not making controllers that are identical. They're not completely you know, ripping off Nintendo's designs. They're putting their own spin on it. And just like the NES, the uh, uh, Cadet 
I keep getting them confused, the Cadet and the Scout, but the Cadet for the NES was the best third-party NES controller I ever used. And I'm pretty much convinced that these Hyperkin um, Scout controllers for the Super Nintendo are the best third-party Super Nintendo. That's my impression so far from using them for quite a bit. So I'm really digging these. You do get two of them with this system. So there we go. Let's go ahead and, um, now we got a, we got a mess over here now with all this unboxing action. Let me go ahead and get this uh, shack, uh, the shack out, which was a previous rental, which is fine. It does have some, uh, some weird stickers on it, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and see how that uh, eject works. Oh, wow, did you see that? It just jumped right out. I'm actually gonna clean some of these stickers off, hopefully. Um, no biggie that there's stickers on there, but there's a little grime and it is what it is. But yeah, these uh, the carts going into the system and then the eject pops them bad boys right out. So let's go ahead, plug the system in, test her out, see how she looks and sounds, make sure everything's legit, which I'm already pretty sure we're good. Um, but I'll go ahead and test it out and give my final impressions. So let's go ahead and plug her in and do that. Okay, my boys and girls. So we just booted up the system and we are getting the Hyperkin logo. So every time you boot up a game, you get the Hyperkin logo. That is going to be my biggest con in this system is that I would prefer not to have a splash screen. You know what I'm saying? Um, I would much prefer the system just to boot straight into the game that I'm playing. Now, if you hit the reset button, it's gonna, you know, it's not gonna give you that splash screen. It's just when you turn the power on for the first time, you get that splash screen every time you turn the power on initially. So that, that it's not too much of a distraction, but it, it kind of. I wish it wasn't there. There's no, there's no reason for it. It doesn't need to be there. So here, as you see, we are playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for Turtles in Time. And I'm happy to say it looks very good and it sounds great. Pixels, everything, everything's looking really sharp and colorful. Um, I'm not getting any kind of distortions or weirdness. On the Gamers Tech 16-bit uh, HD, whenever I would have a black screen like this, there'd be distortion and, and um, like this fuzziness in the background on solid colors and it drove me nuts. Um, with this system, I don't get any of that. I'm getting a sharp, clean image. The sound is really good. You, you know, for the price that you're paying for this system, I'm, I'm really happy. Um, as far as graphics go, uh, you know, it's Super Nintendo, you can't judge the graphics, but the way they're being displayed and presented, I'm not having too much of an issue with anything. Nothing major to gripe about. Um, when the game is, you know, scrolling, pretty much any game you play, uh, is scrolling there you know you you can be the judge of it you might get this little blurring um, effect and I think that's due to the video encoding that is used through HDMI but if you're not noticing that in this image then it's not something that will bother you and it's not anything major it doesn't just detract from the game for me it's just something that I do notice with these clone Super Nintendo systems, and it's on all of them. You know, if you're buying a clone Super Nintendo HD system, that's gonna be between 50 to like 80 bucks. Uh, it's gonna be present. Um, and on this, it's not, it's not too bad. It's just something I wanted to point out so you do realize that. If you could see it, then, you know, you'd be the judge if that annoys you. Um, if you can't see it, then it's, it's not prominent enough to to really be a bother for you. Um, so really my, my biggest impressions here, using the actual controller that came with the system is everything feels great. You got the little bubble butt backing to it, just like the Cadet controllers, and it feels great, it feels really comfortable. Doesn't feel 100% like a Super Nintendo controller, an original, but it feels damn near close and good enough for me for a third party controller. If I were to give this controller a score one to 10, I would give it a solid nine. Would I ever consider giving it a 10? No, just to be clear, um, Super Nintendo original controller as the baseline is a 10. I can't give anything other than a Super Nintendo controller a 10, so 
um, the highest that a Super Nintendo controller that is a clone controller or third-party controller can get from my scoring system would be a 9. So this controller does score the highest for me as far as any third-party Super Nintendo controller I have used. So I'm really digging this. So we tested out Turtles in Time. Looks good, sounds good. You be the judge of the image quality you're seeing on the screen. That's as, that is what you will get. That is the clean, um, unedited image from my recording. Did not adjust anything, have not changed anything, and it looks great to me. So let's go ahead and do something that may be blasphemous. So we're gonna go ahead and put in the Joe and Mac Ultimate Caveman Collection from Retrobit into the Hyperkin Super Retron HD and see if she boots up. So I heard, heard a weird little rumor that this car, these cartridges would not work in the Super, um, the Super, the Super S Boy, um, or the S Boy Super, whatever it's called, the handheld Super Nintendo from Hyperkin. Um, I do not have one to test that out, but people were saying like the cartridges are made to not fit in that, which I think is bogus. Um, I think they just didn't put it in correctly. But this this Retro Bit uh, cartridge fits perfectly fine into the Super Retron HD. So let's go ahead and peep out Congo's caper real quick and see how she looks, or he looks, little monkey boy. So like here, you know, the screen is totally black and I'm not getting any distortion um, in that background, any fuzziness. On that gamer's tech, I was getting that and it was driving me nuts. Um, so definitely a huge plus here for, for Hyperkin. Let's just go ahead and get in the game and see how she does. Even like screens like this with the uh, solid, you know, darker colors in the background or even lighter colors, I would get this weird fuzz that just, that bothered me and I don't know why. And every TV I used that system on, I would get that and I would have to play with the brightness and, and contrast and, and just, you know, different options just to make it not as visible anymore. Um, and on this system, I'm not getting any of that. So that is huge for me. Uh, I'm not going to be using that system anymore. I will be solely using this until the Super NT comes out from Analog. But if you guys are curious and want to see a comparison side by side of both um, the Hyperkin Super Retron and the Gamers Tech 16-bit HD, I can definitely do a video on that. I was going to wait until the Super NT comes out, but drop a comment down below if you would prefer to see that now, just comparing the two cheaper systems. And then I guess later on we can compare the Super NT as well, which, you know, comes out in about a month, so not too long away. But so far I think this the value of the system is great. Um, my only cons are the Hyperkin logo showing up upon initial uh, powering of the system. Uh, that kind of annoys me a little bit. I didn't don't think there's any reason for that to be there, uh, but that was their choice. I guess I will get over it. Uh, and then, you know, getting a little bit of the blur while things are scrolling on screen, which is pretty typical um, with these, you know, low to mid-range cost clone systems for the Super Nintendo. And it doesn't look that bad. I just wanted to point that out, that it is noticeable. Um, you may not even notice that until I pointed it out. So there you go. If you're interested in purchasing the system, link will be in the description. It comes out on the 8th. So if you pre-order now, you should be able to get it uh, delivered from Amazon. You know, either Monday through Wednesday, you should get it. I think it's well worth it if you don't want to spend the $200 on a uh, Super NT. Or if you don't want to go through the hassle of using up, you know, up converters or scalers to use your original Super Nintendo on your HD TVs. So this is a definite awesome option for people who just want to relive their youth or play some awesome retro Super Nintendo games on an awesome system that comes with a couple awesome controllers. So those are my pros here. The system build quality is great. The controllers are solid nine. Um, and it comes with two controllers. So I think the price is pretty awesome for that. These controllers, I think, retail for like $15 each on their own. So I think that's a pretty good bargain uh, for the price that you're paying for this system. So you guys be the judge. Take a peep. The video that we've been watching here of me playing this game. And make your decision. If you want to buy one, grab it. I think it's well worth it. So smash that like button. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Drop a comment. Do all that wonderful stuff. Subscribe. 
and I will catch you guys next time. Boom, peace out, for sure.